I am back today to talk to you about labeling reads. Now, for those of you who have been watching my videos for a while, you know that I use the thread color and thread color combinations in order to know which profile, which shape, and which cane type that I'm using. But when I have a consistent method that is working out, it's not uncommon for me to end up with a full read box all with the same color. Now, usually I keep them in order so that I know which read is which, and um, the last one that I've performed on, I usually do um, the oldest to the newest from left to right, uh, but I have had those moments of just sheer klutz. Um, and also it happens when the adrenaline seems to be going super high just before a big performance where I have dropped my read box. And when I have dropped my read box, Sometimes I'm lucky and it stays closed, but other times reads just fly everywhere. And then the whole system is just, it's gone. So this is the second way that I label reads so that if any catastrophe happens, I am A-OK. -okay. Now, for this tutorial, you're going to need some key items. You're going to need, of course, a read that you're ready to label, a mandrel to brace it, a triangle diamond file, water to wet the diamond file. Um, remember that as you wet a diamond file, it will take off cane more quickly, so always be careful with using a dampened diamond file. A sharp pencil and quick dry clear nail polish. Here I'm using the 60 second Rimmel nail polish. I like to sand between the first and the second wires, specifically the side that has um, the back side of the first wire so that there is plenty of space to sand. And I usually sand at an angle so that I'm only sanding one side of the bark. By sanding off a little bit of this bark, I'm able to, of course, remove some of that glossy outer shell of the cane, allowing me to write more cleanly with a pencil. I like to take a very sharp pencil so that I can get really clean lines and mark it with either a letter, a number, or a symbol. Um, I use a letter sometimes when I'm just trying to delineate the type of cane. Um, I'll use a number if I'm keeping a read journal and every uh, read has a number on it. Or I'll use a symbol if that's going to be an easier way for me to mark all the same types um, that I'm looking at. In this case, I am marking the read with an M. M means Madeir for me because I'm trying to note that this is the type of Madeir GSP cane. Um, I have used this same color of binding once in the past for Donzi GSP cane, and um, I want to be able, years from now, to be able to tell the difference between the Donzi GSP cane that I have made reads out of versus the Madeir. The second type that I am going to do, I am uh, have of course a different wrapping on it, so it's a different system. Um, here it is still the Madeir style cane, so I put an M on it, so I do know it's Madeir. Um, but in this case, because it is my own personal setup, I'm putting an E after it for Aaron. If I have multiple reads with all of the same setup, this is when I really like to go ahead and give it a number. I have marked the cane with an appropriate symbol, some kind of way to mark it so that I know what it is, I go ahead and I cover that in clear nail polish so it won't ever smudge off. I wait 60 seconds for it to dry and while it's drying I go ahead to my read notebook and I mark down what type of cane has um, the symbol M and what has the symbol ME. Just in case at any point I forget how I was labeling them, I have a backup so I know not only from the wrapping, also from the symbol, what it is exactly that I'm looking at. OK, 
Okay guys, I hope you found this helpful and that this is a way that you can um, have the same wrapping on a read but also be able to tell the difference on what a read is, taking a lot of that guesswork out of what it is that you've been using and what you've been having success with. Um, and if you have success with more than one, you can make sure that um, you're still able to tell the difference. If you guys have ways that you tell the difference on your reads, I would love to have a comment from you guys. Do take a second and leave me one. I just love reading your comments. If you want to keep up with me, I'm available to you all the time on Instagram, Twitter. I am trying to get into Snapchat. So if you uh, take a second and you want to help me out with that and start following me on there, I would absolutely love it. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Welcome back to the third video in a series of three on making a blank with me. By now you should have already watched video one, which dealt with hand gouging, the folding over, and beveling. And then also video two, which took you through scoring, forming, and putting on the wires of a reed. Is that it? Your future's so bright you have to wear shades. I feel you. I feel you. Oh, you're too cool to talk to me. Peace, yo. Peace. Can you hear that? It sounds like squeaky weaky. Like, oh my gosh, like I have Coco squeakers in my shoes. Oh, I'm having a blue theme day. Who knew? The blue nails, they perfectly match my shirt. Alfonso.